So we're going to quickly move on to features of different networks. And I'm going to try and do this one again a bit different. I'm just going to be Googling stuff again and running through what these are. I need to get this finished quickly. So the main ones we're going to be focusing are LAN, local area network, PAN, personal or private area network, WAN, wide area network. And the only one that they've left off is a virtual private network, V for Victor, Papa, November, VPN. I'm going to start off with PAN. Now, for the purpose of Unit 1, you only need to think of PAN as one device being connected to another, or maybe two devices, okay? But not anything more than that. So the basic example they normally give is a mobile phone connected to Bluetooth earpiece, head, headset, or a smartwatch. Not anything more than that. Again, this is purely for Unit 1. Other PANs other PANS, other personal area networks or private area networks might have more devices, but for the purpose of Unit 1, think of it as quite simply one device connected to another. Now, it can be a mobile phone linked to a smartwatch or um, headphones or earpiece, but it could also be a mobile phone hotspot linked to one or multiple other devices. This is how they normally do it in the exam. The question I normally see come up is someone on the train, they're trying to get to work or college and they need to connect their laptop or tablet to the internet and they connect it to their own PAN, their own personal area network. So they turn the hotspot on on their phone and they access it that way. There are also questions that come up which ask you to describe the process of how you actually connect to a PAN. I will go over these as soon as I can, but that's a PAN right there, personal area network. So next we have a LAN a local area network. Now this is where you have multiple devices connected to a network, generally in a single or small geographical location. Here I've shown you guys what I've Googled to get all the information on this. So features of a LAN are the following. Every computer has a potential to communicate with other computers of the network. So I can send a message to all the other devices in the network. High degree of intercommunication between computers or devices, let's say. Now, a LAN is normally seen in a school, an office building, a house. Your house is a LAN where you have maybe one central Wi-Fi box downstairs somewhere and everyone connects to that Wi-Fi box using, obviously, Wi-Fi. It is normally interconnected because you might not be able to see it from your device, but you can actually pick up all other devices connected to that same network. Easy physical connection of computers in a network. Um, it can be physical. And it, it becomes physical when you have Ethernet cables, not Internet cables, Ethernet cables. That's the thick one you plug in the back of your um, computer or console. Inexpensive medium of data transmission. Yep, very, very true. You normally have one Wi-Fi router downstairs. And again, a router gives access to the Internet and a switch does not. A router gives access to the Internet, to the outside world. A switch does not. A switch only connects devices together within a, within a network. So let's say I had in a classroom 20 computers and I needed all of them to get internet access. I would connect firstly all 20 of them to a switch and then that switch would be connected to the router so that I can have access for all 20 at once without buying 20 different routers or multiple routers. Um, high data transmission rate, uh, that's a bit flaky because it all depends on the network capabilities. It's not simply high data transfer rate because it's a LAN, but typically within a LAN, inside the LAN, you can get high speeds. So let's say you're downloading a file from Microsoft.com. It might download at 10 megabytes per second because that's all Microsoft allows you to do. However, if you're trying to download a file from your dad's computer downstairs and you're upstairs, whatever the maximum file transfer rate of both devices are, and of that cable. So the weakest link in that device or, or, or in that household is going to be the thing that slows the network down. So if the slowest thing in that connection is going to be 50 megabytes, that's most likely what it will transfer at. Next, we have wide area network, WAN, simply multiple LANs connected together, multiple local area networks connected together. And the internet is essentially multiple WANs connected together. So here we have a diagram, and as you can see around it, we have multiple LANs, the local area networks. They connect together and they create a WAN. Now, a nice example of this is, let's say you work for a school like mine where you have three different sites. 
we have one in location A, location B, and location C. They're all spread out by roughly, let's say, five or ten miles um, apart from each other. But because they're a single entity, they're a single school, they're a single business or a company, they have to share files in some way. So a WAN is really good for doing this because even though location A or site A is one land by itself over there five miles away, location B is another land and location C is another land, we can connect them over the internet and create a WAN, a wide area network. These are simply lands uh, spread across multiple geographical locations or a large geographical location. So even though I'm working in site A and site B, if I go to site C for whatever reason, I can still access my files at site A. Now that's the benefit of this. A WAN allows you to pretend or act as if you're in a different location. It creates that virtual network, which is what we have next, to make your PC think you're on site when you aren't or that you can share files when you're in a different location. Right, so VPN, a virtual private network. And as the name states, again, we're going to go back to this. IT engineers or IT people are very bad at giving things unique names, but I think it makes a lot of sense. Virtual meaning not real. Private meaning secured to some extent, your own personal thing. Network, and we know what a network is. Multiple devices connected together um, that can communicate. So we have a not real personal communication system, right? Now, the way this works, most of you might know VPN from using it to watch stuff on Netflix that's not available here in the UK or in other places um, around the world. So that's essentially what it does. This creates a secure connection over the internet by using encryption. And what is encryption? Encryption is simply scrambling the information when it's being sent as to ensure that if there are any third parties who get the information, they will not be able to decipher or understand what is there. Now you might ask, why would someone want to use a VPN? Why is a VPN important outside of watching stuff on Netflix? Think about it like this, right? I have a work laptop. I can work from home on my laptop using a VPN. If I do not use a VPN, the information, the data, the traffic that is being sent back and forth between my laptop at home and the network servers at work and the files I need to access, it's not very secure. And if it's not very secure, we know that there are threats that could get in and cause problems for the network. So we use a VPN to encrypt the data because we're going to use a public network and we use cryptographic keys. Just think of them as keys, right? And only the two, three, well, only the people with the keys, two, three, ten, a million, it doesn't matter how many people have the keys, only the people with the keys can access that information, right? So I use a VPN at home to trick my laptop to thinking it's at work so I can access all the same files I can when I'm at work, when I'm on site. Um, this technique is called tunneling, but you guys don't need to concern yourself with this for unit one. All you need to know is that we use VPNs over public networks, normally the internet, um, and it is always encrypted. So that way, people don't know what the message is actually saying, and we can transmit data safely and, well, relatively safely, relatively securely. Again, if I were to buy a cable or ask a virgin to wire a cable all the way from my house to school, in the grand scheme of things, it might not be that expensive. But if you think about companies like Microsoft and Google, who have, con um, not countries, who have um, sites or buildings all around the US, all around the world, having them wire cables hundreds of miles or thousands of miles in some cases, that's going to become very, very expensive not very efficient and very, very impractical, where we have a software solution here, a VPN, which creates that connection for us virtually, and it works in more or less the same way. Now, VPNs do have some downsides. They do tend to be slightly slower because of all the work going on in the background, so VPNs are relatively slow.